My name is Dennis Erickson. I'm with the Water Quality Program in Southwest Regional Office of the Department of Ecology. And um, I'm going to uh, go through a demonstration today of how to sh uh, sample a shallow well uh, for the uh, general parameters that a number of our facilities need to sample for. I thought we'd go through that because in Western Washington, uh, we have a, a procedure here that I think uh, is fairly cost effective and, uh, and, and efficient. It can be efficient after some practice. So we're going to go through that procedure today and, um, and show you the kinds of equipment we have and, uh, and identify all those procedures that we're going to do. Okay, at this point we're going to take the water level and we're going to use that information to calculate how much water we have in our well. This well is uh, about 20 feet deep, and so we're going to take our water level and determine where we want to set our sampling point. We're going to be fairly careful. We want to measure it down to a hundredth of a foot. And with this meter, the way this works is this light will go on when we have contact with the water. Okay, the light's on, I go up, light's off, I find the point, okay, find the closest mark, this is it, and we measure that distance. This tape is marked every five feet. So the distance to water from the top of the casing is 12.57 feet. What we're going to do is um, we've calculated how much water is in the well and it's 1.3 gallons of water. So we'll call that a well volume. 1.3 gallons is one well volume. Okay, now we're going to insert uh, our tubing that we're going to sample through into the well and put it about a foot or two below the water level surface. What we're going to do is hook the tubing that we've inserted into the well. We're about two feet below the water surface. We're hooking it up to our pump. This is the suction end of a peristaltic pump. And what this peristaltic pump does is provides um, a negative pressure uh, as it deforms this flexible tubing. And there's a, a rotation uh, within the pump uh, head that will bring water to the surface through a vacuum. I'm going to insert, this is a, our multi-parameter probe that we're going to measure pH, temperature, and conductivity while we're purging out the well prior to doing any uh, of the sampling. We're going to get that ready to go. And Initially, this is where the discharge end will be. We're going to hook that in to the flow. This is the flow cell here. We're going to hook water into there. Water will move up through the flow cell, past our probe, and then discharge into a bucket where we, we've we actually marked uh, the volume of uh, gallon increments there. So we can keep track of the well volumes that we've discharged from the well during the sampling, purging. Okay. Okay, we start up the pump.
water discharging. What I do is let this discharge for a little bit, just in case there's been some sediment or uh, some kind of accumulation of anything in the well that might interfere with the, the discharge to the flow cell. So I usually let that... This looks pretty clear. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to the flow cell. Discharge. We're going to fill up the flow cell and then discharge to our bucket. It's a while to fill up this flow cell, so we'll speed it up a little. Then we'll slow down to about a liter a minute when we're doing the purging. Then we'll even slow it down a little more when we're doing the sampling. We'll get down to about 100 to 200 mils per minute. Done is, has constructed a, a, a flow cell here that's open at the top. This allows any size probe to be inserted into the, the meter. Uh, I, what we can do is toggle through um, pH, conductivity, and temperature while we're doing this purging. And what we're going to do is determine when the pH, conductivity, and temperature stabilize. No reading stabilized. That tells us when we've, uh, we can take a sample. And we also track the well volume at the same time, just to make sure that we're charging enough water between readings with the meters to indicate stability. So when we hit the uh, one gallon, we'll go ahead and record We've actually calculated, we've actually put out a little more than that because we filled up the flow cell. We'll just, what we want to do is just see when stability is good. As you recall, 1.3 gallons represents one well volume. You see, pH is about 5.98 right now. And conductivity is very low at 47. More than typical groundwater. At each gallon increment, I'm going to go ahead and take a reading uh, to see what our field parameters are. And again, what we're looking for is stability uh, over a well volume. Remember, the well volume is about 1.3 gallons. At a minimum, we usually pump out at least at least three well volumes. But the critical thing is to get the purge parameters to stabilize. That's really the indicator. To, in this case, we've got a well that it looks pretty stable right from the get-go in the, the first. But look, we're going to go ahead and pump out uh, three well volumes and make sure things stay stable. Now we finished uh, purging the well. It took about four well volumes, but our purge parameters have stabilized. So what I've done now is reduced the pumping rate to about 100 between 100 and 200 mils uh, per minute, milliliters per minute. And now we're going to start our sampling. And what I've got here are three uh, different kinds of parameters that we, uh, bottles for different parameters. And they, they just, the reason I'm going to show these is that they require uh, a different kind of handling. So, um, in this case, this is our general chemistry kinds of parameters, chloride, total dissolved solids. We're going to go through a triple rinse with these before we collect our sample. We'll rinse it with the water that we purge from the well, our sample water. So this, uh, this is our nutrient sample in this case. We have a preservative in this. This is sulfuric acid preservative. And we don't want to rinse this bottle. We want to just fill it up to the shoulder in this case. So for samples with preservatives, we don't, uh, we don't want to overfill and we don't want to rinse. Here's a, a bacteriologic sample. This would be fecal coliform or total coliform. 
And for this sample, we're going to handle a little differently. We don't want to rinse the sample at all. But when we do our sampling, we're going to remove the top and, and make sure that we don't touch anything with that top and that we don't touch the inside of this bottle with the tubing when we do the sampling because we don't want to introduce bacteria to the sample. So we'll go ahead and do the sampling now. We're, we're going to obtain our samples before they go into the flow cell. So we're going to disconnect from the flow cell at this point. And we're going to collect our sample right from the discharge point from the pump. And we'll go ahead and get our general chemistry parameter first. So we're going to go ahead and pump this in. And this will take a while at the slower pumping rate. So this will be our first rinse. Shake the sample real good. And then Charge that out. Go ahead, do it again. We're going to do this three times. Okay, that's the third rinse. And we can go ahead and fill the sample bottle up. So usually the sampling's done at about 100 to 200 mils per minute. And the idea is that we're moving the water in through the well screen now to the uh, into the well at a fairly slow rate. We're trying to keep it from uh, trying to keep the flow laminar from the aquifer into the well, so we're getting a good representative sample of the aquifer. We're going to fill the bottle up to the shoulder. Most general chemistry samples you fill up to the shoulder. The, the ones where you need uh, limited headspace or no headspace, volatile types of uh, analysis, volatile organic analyses where you, you have no headspace, uh, alkalinity where you try to eliminate headspace so there's no contact with the atmosphere, you might you feel those. Uh, general chemistry, contact with the air is not an issue. Okay, like that. Now we'll go ahead and do our nutrient sample. And again, this is one where we don't rinse. Don't overfill. So this sample would be for nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, and total Keldal nitrogen. Okay. Now we'll go to the bacteriologic sample. What I'm going to do is 
We don't want to touch the inside of this surface of the bottle. No rinsing. Try to minimize the time that this is open so that you minimize the time it can be contaminated by airborne bacteria. You want to leave enough, you go up to the shoulder, you want to leave some air space in there so you don't kill the bacteria. And we have sampled the well. We can shut this off. Okay, we've finished the sampling now. And what we're going to do, uh, what I do is prepare my sample tags ahead of time so that they're all ready to go. The only thing I have to do is record the time. So I take my sample tags and I immediately put those on just so there's no confusion, uh, especially if you're sampling a number of wells in that day. So I, I suggest get the sample tags ready, put them on your samples, each one of the sample bottles. Go ahead and fill out the paperwork that you need to fill out, your chain of custody, that, uh, paperwork that the lab requires usually to, to send in. You fill that out. And then you place these samples uh, into the cooler with ice, and then they're ready for transport to the laboratory.